Hi everybody and welcome back to Tales of Wanderlust. If you want tips and tricks for taking a shower in a wet bath and while boondocking, then stay tuned. All right, showers in a wet bath and while boondocking and in a base camp. So that's what we're gonna go through today. Some of the issues is one, you are showering with your toilet. <laughs> Two, when you're boondocking, you have very limited water supply and you have limited gray tank space. Three, in the base camp, you have a Truma combo, combi unit, whatever they call it, and it is only three gallons of hot water. So even after you take all this, make it comfortable, then you've only got three gallons of hot water to have a shower with. So how over the last four years have I made these showers actually really luxurious feeling? We're gonna go through all of those today. Today's video is sponsored by Waggle Pet Monitor. Waggle keeps me up to date on real-time alerts of the temperature of the RV via the Verizon cell phone network. It also has a geofence on it. So worst case scenario, if my trailer ever goes off without me when I'm in town running errands, I get an alert from Waggle and it tells me where the RV is. So in this little device that has a battery, I get the peace of mind of being able to keep an eye on these guys. Right now, if you use our code TAILS50, you'll get 50% off this monitor. First off, let's take a tour of my wet bath. You will see one of my biggest annoyances with this wet bath is the back shower aluminum wall. So when I wash my hair in here or I have soap that splashes, the aluminum shows all of the dirt and it doesn't really look that clean. I used to clean it after almost every shower, but that gets tiring. Now I just don't notice the trips anymore. <laughs> but here in the base camp, you actually have a pretty decently sized wet bath. So I'm five foot seven and I still have a good amount of room. I don't have a measuring tape, but I would say, you know, that's at least eight inches a room. So my boyfriend is six feet tall. He can stand up in here just fine. If you have the base camp 16, the toilet is on the opposite side of the shower. And if you have the 20, they're on the same side. So you don't have this awkward angle that you have to work with when you shower. So I did a few changes to the shower in here. The first and my absolute favorite is the Oxygenetics Fury shower head. This shower head already uses less water than the stock Delta one that comes with, and it puts air in with the water, making it feel like you have much more water pressure than you actually do. And then down here is a shutoff valve, which I added on. So the shutoff valve allows you to stop that annoying RV shower head dribble. So if you've ever showered in an RV and you went to go use the shutoff valve that comes on the shower head, you'll notice there's just a constant dribble that comes down. Well, this shutoff valve completely stops that. That is how I save water and how I can shower every single day in the base camp, even when boondocking. So we'll get into that tip later. The one downfall of putting the shutoff valve where I did is this sits in here but not very well. So it can't stay up here while I'm towing. One of the things I have to do every time I pack up the RV is actually take the shower head off and rest it on the ground. Otherwise, when I go over a bump, it comes flying out of this rest. You can attach it down next to the faucet if you want, but I don't wanna have to reach down every single time I turn the water on and off. So that's why I ended up putting it here. Next, I like to use washcloths when I shower. So this is a packing cube that I just got off Amazon. It's actually the Amazon Basics brand. And that is where I store my washcloths. It can easily sit right here. I leave it there when I'm towing. It doesn't scratch or cause any issues. It's soft and it's light, so it doesn't come flying off. It is in the shower, but the backside here is completely solid. And I have a shower curtain that comes across. This is what it looks like when I'm actually showering in here. And I don't use that much water, so it really doesn't splash up here and get those wet. So for me, I find this works really well. Rotating in this absolutely massive space here on the stock towel rack that comes in the base camp is a floor mat. This is really critical for me and my travel companions. Napoleon's litter box is under the bed. He sometimes drags litter out. So even though I clean and I 
wipe the floor every single day, you still sometimes will get little pieces of litter on the ground. I don't like stepping onto that when I shower. So the floor mat goes down so I have something nice and clean to step on when I get out of the shower. I almost flushed the toilet. Then over here, this is a command hook rack that I put up there. That's where I put my washcloths. So after I shower, I hang it up there to dry. Then the base camp comes with this organizer that is stock. I have put shampoo and stuff in there before, but it's really too heavy and the whole thing comes flying off the wall. Mine has come loose as well, so I ended up using Gorilla Epoxy Glue to actually glue each of the corners up. And since I put on that epoxy glue, this has not moved. So I definitely recommend that because the tape they use does not hold up over time. In terms of what I store in here, up top is actually my Tide detergent pods. They're sealed, I fold them over so water can't get into them. And it sits up there on the top. So water really doesn't get in there and I don't have to worry about that. In the next one, there's nothing in there. It is just storage for my hair clip because I have nothing else. In the bottom here, I used to have a hand pump. One of the things I used to do when boondocking is actually close the stopper at the bottom of the shower. That way all the water collected there. And then I would use that hand pump and actually pump the water out of the little escape door that is here in the shower. You can't dump gray water in all boondocking spots. There are restrictions to that. You also have to think of if you're in the desert, you can cause erosion. Also, what kind of soap are you using? Things like that. So I would really do that only when I was doing a hot rinse down and it really helped extend the life of the black gray water tank that I have here in the base camp. But that only had a lifespan of about a year and then the hand pump broke. So I haven't replaced it yet. So the only thing I have is my razor, which goes there in the bottom. Overall, there really isn't much stored in this organizer. If you have one of the newer models of the base camp, a shower curtain comes stock. But in the older ones, so the 2017 to 2019, I think, it did not come with a shower curtain or a shower rod. So I ended up getting these right off Amazon. This is just a tension rod. It's really easy to put up there. This is a waterproof curtain because the base camp door does not seal all the way when it's closed. So if you don't have some sort of curtain, the water actually goes out of the bottom of the door onto your kitchen floor. It's also really easy to take off these plastic hooks. And then that way I can wash it every time I do laundry because if you don't wash it, it does start to smell from all the mildew and it's a really tiny space in here. So any kind of smells at all are just going to be overwhelming in such a small space. And then my final shower mod is this command hook rack. This is one of the first things I put on the base camp when I bought it. It just sticks to the wall. It stays here with the shampoo in it when I tow, when I drive down dirt bumpy roads, and it has never come off. So I'm actually really impressed with how it's held up. And this is where I store my shampoo, Jasper shampoo, and my face cleaner, and then my body soap as well. And the base camp comes with this handy dandy toilet paper holder that you can just close and then your toilet paper doesn't get wet. All right, so how do I actually take showers in here? One of the tricks to taking a low water shower is to heat the hot water up to just the temperature that you like to shower. That way you don't have to do the hot and cold water mix, which if you've ever done that in an RV, you know it is super finicky. You turn the hot water on, you turn the cold on, you move it just a little bit and the whole temperature of the water changes. So with the Truma, I turn the hot water onto hot and then I let it run for 17 minutes. That may change depending on the ambient temperature outside. If it's really cold, you're gonna need a little bit more time to heat up the water. If it's 80 degrees out, you might need even less. I also don't take as hot of showers in the summer, so then it might be about 15 minutes. Once my timer for the 15, 17, or 20 minutes on the Truma has gone off, then I come into the shower and I turn on just the hot water. Since you can't always tell what the temperature of the water is coming out of the Truma, I turn that on and then I test it out to see if the temperature of the water is comfortable. Sometimes you'll find it's too cold, you need to let it run a little bit more. Sometimes it's too hot and then you're just gonna have to mix the hot and cold water. That one is unfortunately too hot. So with the Truma combi unit, where it is the heater and hot water in one, if you have the heat going, this hot water trick doesn't really work because the heater is gonna automatically heat up any of the water sitting in the Truma. So your three gallons is gonna get really hot. It does get to a really scalding temperature. So just be really careful 
if you have the heat on or if you've let the truma heat the hot water all the way up to what it thinks is the max because it's not a temperature you could shower at, it would really hurt. So I'm gonna have to mix the hot and cold water today. With the cold water, I just turn the knob about a quarter twist. And that's usually about where the comfort level is with the cold and hot water. So I don't waste too much water getting to the perfect temperature. But back to the happy path scenario where if my hot water was just heated up to exactly the temperature I wanted and I felt it and everything was great, I would turn the truma off and then hop in the shower. When I get in the shower, I don't take a full-on water pressure shower because that uses a lot of water and it really fills up your black gray tank really quickly. In this base camp it is a combined black gray tank so it's not like you can just let it run out into nature because you do have sewage in there. So you really want to be careful of how much water you get down in there otherwise it's really going to limit your boondocking time. So my showers are dribble showers. You get in, you turn on the water just a little bit, you get wet, then you turn the water completely off. Soap up, clean everything up, and then turn that dribble back on and rinse off. With that, I can take a shower with less than a gallon of water, and that is how I shower every single day. Yes, you can get clean. It's amazing how little water you actually need to get clean. And you may be saying, it's not a very relaxing or luxurious shower. You're right, compared to a house or a hotel, those showers are gonna be a lot more luxurious. This is an RV shower and I only have 24 gallons of fresh water and a black gray combined tank to work with. And I like to boondock and be off grid and stay out there for a week or two at the time. So the dribble showers are compromised so that I can shower every day and feel clean all while staying off grid for a lot longer. But let me tell you, once you get used to the dribble shower, that hot water hitting you, especially after a day out in the desert where you feel sandy and gritty, that hot water feels amazing, no matter how much is coming out of the shower head. So give it a try. You may actually be amazed at how luxurious feeling these showers can be after a long day of camping. The things I do for YouTube. I am wasting water as I'm demonstrating this. One other trick, which I learned from Chris and Aaron at Irene Iron Travels, is if you have a wet bath, get a squeegee. Then when you are done showering, you can squeegee off the wall and try to prevent some of this dirt on the aluminum. And you can squeegee the floor so the next time you go in to go to the restroom, you're not stepping in water from your shower. And towels, what do I do for towels? So my towels are just attached to the side of the shower here. These are silver command hooks. For my hair, I use one of these, I don't even know what they're called, but it is a triangle towel and it just fits over your head. So it kind of goes like, I have a hair clip in, but you kind of do like that and then that. And it is a tiny little towel. So it doesn't take up much room at all. So it's a great travel towel. And then I still have not found a bath towel that I like. So I don't use small towels. I like the luxury of having a big bath towel. I started RVing with a true bath towel, but depending on where I was camping, it didn't always dry all the way through. So it started smelling mildewy after just a few days. Then I switched to one of those microfiber quick dry camping towels. I didn't like the way it felt and it got caught on any dry skin I might have. So that didn't last long. That's now the dog towel. Then I went to this, which is a Turkish towel. It's beautiful. It's nice looking. So it looks good hanging off the door, but I'm not really a big fan. You try to dry off, but it only dries you 50% of the way. And then you really have to either scrub with the towel to dry or just air dry. So I have seen Turkish slash Terry towels, and that is what I'm gonna try next and see if that is a little bit better. So I'm still on the search for the perfect RV towel. So you might be asking with how little water I use and having long hair, how do I actually wash my hair in a shower like this when I'm boondocking? Well, the trick is I wash my hair once a week. For that once a week shower, I do heat up the hot water all the way. I mix the water. I use a little bit more water pressure. I use probably about three, four gallons of water and I wash my whole hair. How do I only wash it once a week? It just took time and it took getting used to it. When I lived in an apartment, I washed my hair every single day. 
by the evening, my hair was starting to get greasy and flat and gross, and I really had to wash it, otherwise it looked awful. So that transition period from going every day to washing once a week was definitely pretty hard. I wore a hat a lot in order to hide my hair. But now that my hair is used to only getting washed once a week, it doesn't look that bad. With that, I'm gonna go take a shower for the evening, clean up, and I really do look forward to my evening showers before I crawl into bed. So if you have any questions on any of this setup, feel free to comment below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching everybody and we'll see you next time. Scrub-a-dub-dub. -dub.